the world of football and the game itself. Yeah. What do you make of these changes that are happening in the world of refereeing? Well, these are fundamental, huge changes. These are historic changes. And to me, it's exciting times because I'm not an RC. An RC is a person that is resistant to change. And people that are afraid of technology, and mostly it's people that are born before technology, but some of us embrace technology as long as it will assist the referee in making correct decisions. However, football is different and we don't want those stoppages because the game is fluid and very exciting when it's flowing. Now let's look at the actual changes. I'll start with your law eight, which is the kickoff. Now normally, uh, before the changes are going to be effected on the 1st of June 2016, uh, the rest will come to, the rest are uh, experiments that may only come in after, and if they're successful, only after uh, 2017 or the 2017-2018 yes. season. But what's key for me, it's at the time of kicking off, at the moment we say the ball must be kicked forward into the opponent's half. Now, from 1st June, the ball may be kicked as long as it moves, it, irrespective of what direction. That's a huge change because now you can take a shot at goal and score from there. Before you carry on further, the quick question is why make that particular change? Because you are forced now to restrict the movement of players and the creativity and innovation of players. And that's what we want. People are complaining that on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the stadia that we have, people are no longer on the seats. This is one of the ways to bring back the people. Excitement, let's see innovation. That's why I like this change. All right. Then All there's right. another, well, let's carry on. All right. The second one, which is critical also, is that if a player gets injured by virtue of a, 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 a foul that is cautionable by yellow card or sent off by a red card, now you don't have to treat that player off the field of play. What is the rationale there? Is the rationale is that he was fouled and, and a yellow or red card was issued. Then you take the player out and the imbalance now. They still have 10 and the other player is also out. Sometimes the yellow card is still 11 against 10. So, and that's a very good way of saying, if he's treatable on the field of play, let's treat him without him leaving the field of play. Thus, you know, uh, tilting the, the scales negatively it's towards the offended player. Yeah. Yes. Um, you want me to talk about the triple punishment? There's Evidently, the triple punishment about the Everybody penalties. wants it except the match officials. Uh, we as match officials don't like it that much. Not that we are not assimilating the change. We don't like it that much because it's a discipline issue. Uh, it's not compromising us as referees. If we, if we know that if you're going to prevent a goal scoring opportunity, you are going to be penalized by virtue of a free kick, whether direct or direct, indirect, or a penalty kick, that's one punishment. The second punishment, you are going to be sent off the field because you prevented a goal scoring opportunity or you prevented a goal, is too pronged. The third is that you get a suspension uh, by virtue of your league. It may be one game suspension or two game suspension, depending in which league you're playing. So that's why it was called a three point punishment. Yes. The good thing for us referees, you, you would not want to do that. So that means discipline on the field and the game will flow. Right. However, they are now saying, because it has been discussed over many years, every time it went to the IFAB, which is the International Football Association board, and that's the only board that is the custodian of the laws of the game, would then uh, come back and push it back and say, go and revise. So this time they've agreed on the wording. Now, who are the uh, uh, stakeholders here, evidently coaches, players, and match officials, and administrators. So what is the final outcome as far as the wording is concerned, which is key? Now, if I'm simplifying it, because it's quite a technical law, yes. now I'm simplifying it. If a goalkeeper or a defender in his own penalty area, in an endeavor, a genuine endeavor to play the ball, fouls an opponent, meaning a striker inside his own penalty area, and a penalty must be awarded. Under normal circumstances, you would then get a red card, etc. But this time, you shall be given a yellow card. Only, I repeat, only if it was a genuine attempt to play the ball, and it has to do with preventing a goal-scoring opportunity. Only, we must emphasize that. It continues to say the other infringements that normally occur, yes. if you are 
attempting not to play the ball. Two, you are not even near the ball. Three, the, the foul that you committed is actually a sending off foul. You shall still be sent off. So is this where the video refereeing would come in handy as well? Because there are times when it's a little dicey, when it's the goalkeeper either, either was going for the ball or missed it or his leg stuck out and caught the striker or his hand caught the striker. Is it going to be where the video refereeing is going to come in? Because this could be totally marginal. It's a major change in football, let me assure you. Uh, we are still shaking our heads that FIFA for many years refused technology. However, this is a different kettle of fish altogether from what I've just explained. Yes. The video referee, it's a completely different kettle of fish. What are we talking about here? We're talking, they are concentrating on four things and the protocols are not yet agreed upon. They are given 12 months, I mean 24 months, 18 to 24 months to actually review and test them. And these tests, they've got about 13 uh, football leagues that are interested in testing. Mm -hmm. Based on that, they just want a handful that they can accumulate data so that they can come back with a framed law and if it is acceptable. And what is the main thing? They don't want the game to be actually right. uh, uh, in, in, you know, stopped, stopped intermittently. The bottom line is there will be a referee um, looking at the video that will currently communicate. That is but one protocol they're looking at. Maybe somebody sitting on an OB van next to the field or next to the touchline, or maybe in a suite with multi panels as far. And, and the other thing is the game, um, the, it will change how football is being broadcast. Yes. How many cameras are going to be there? They need not fewer than 36 cameras. Wow. Yeah, wow. you see, that's a different kettle of fish. It's a pity time is constrained. Yeah. There are many others that we can talk about. Yes. Now, this is clearly, we've just made a great advert for bringing you back in to actually talk more about this and actually talk to specifics. Uh, Sylvester, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming through. You've, you've given us a, a bit of an idea of where yeah. it is that football is heading, yeah. what some of these uh, new rule changes uh, mean, and I think a lot of fans will be uh, grateful for this. Well, let's look forward to this uh, when they give us the actual text of the law. Fantastic. Now, Sylvester Ndaba, uh, former uh, soccer referee, giving us a lowdown on the latest in the football changes. I would thank him very much for that. He'll be back. Don't, you can count on that.